The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where wealth technology is simplified. With Australia's number one platform for overall satisfaction and value, you don't need to imagine. NetWealth is continually investing in new tools and platform features to optimize your staff productivity and to give you and your clients the best user experience. With our managed accounts functionality, bring new efficiency and scale to your investment operations. A world of technology awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Rated by Investment Trends number one for overall satisfaction by users from 2014 to 2022. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking financial planning that's as easy as drag and drop with Cameron Drury, CEO and co-founder at Can We. So you're probably thinking, yeah, righto, cool marketing spin. But no, literally, a tray opens up on the right-hand side of your screen. You pick from a massive selection of available life events or goals, sort of templates, drag them onto a modeling canvas or timeline, and from there, the planning begins. So on that same canvas, you can pick up that goal or event, drop it into another year or time frame, and watch your financial projection change in literal real time. And it also really helps with entering appropriate inputs Something that's a big challenge with modeling is you know, showing the estimated cost of things or things to look out for when thinking about goals. So it will come up with you know, the estimated cost of getting married, starting a family, having children, um, starting a business, all those sort of things, et cetera. And what I've realized through financial modeling is it's not actually creating the financial model itself that's difficult or hard. It's the can we do this? Can we do that? What if we did this? The scenario comparison. And this is where a lot of those traditional modeling tools fall over, the tracking and sticking to a plan. So how far have we deviated from that plan we made six or 12 months ago and amending that plan to get back on track or simply adjust and adapt to what is our ever-changing lives. Um, In terms of financial modeling and client engagement software, it's the cleanest, simplest, and most engaging tool I've seen. And it's a perfect middle ground between back of the envelope projections and your fully fledged long-term planning and projection tool. So your X tools plus um, advisor logic, midwinter, but also standalone tools like Voyant and RetireMap, et cetera. To sum it up, it's just an incredibly thoughtful and refreshing approach to financial planning and financial modeling. And Cam and the team at CanWe are very open to partnerships with advisors. I started by asking Cam what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Yeah, I think the oldest piece of tech I own is probably my OG Apple Watch. It's one of those like really impulsive, like I need this in my life impulse buys. Um, and for a few years, I was like all about it. You know, I'm telling others like I'm tracking my steps. I got my 10,000 steps in today. I'm like reading messages and meetings, changing songs. But then like after a while, I was like, God, it's like every notification, every email, every message, just like buzzing all the time. So I took it yeah. off and I was like, you know, I feel better not being a walking notification center so yeah nice yeah no i'm with you i've i'm not sure if you've got um i'm sure sh- i assume you've upgraded since then but yeah like I'm, I'm the same i need to make sure that only some notifications come through otherwise you just yeah look at it more than you look at your phone so totally with you there and then i guess as sort of apple starts to embed ai i'm trying to think of a segue good segue cam but is there one or two ways that you're using ai either personally or in your work life god i i, I use ai like a lot like probably more than i should and more than i'd say like the vast majority of people 
like a little bit okay. of backstory. So before I started Camway, I was in like product management and doing management consulting. You mm-hmm. know, and I'm doing all the typical discovery and consulting stuff you do. So like talking to users, mocking up UI, testing concepts. And when we got started, you know, I was very focused on that. And my co-founder was like deep in the code and building the guts of the app. But there's all these like little UI tweaks that I'm looking at and going like, I'm like itching to make changes here. And I didn't really want to keep pestering him. So I got him to get me set up and started copying and pasting little like snippets of code into chat GPT and asking for help. And, you know, like a year later, our team joke is that I'm practically a senior software engineer and you know, who knows, maybe I'll be a principal engineer soon. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. It seems to be, yeah, a really effective way to use AI. I think it's also, it can be so dangerous too, like with people that haven't had any experience with code. I'm probably one of those people, but just blindly copying and pasting that into wherever they want it to go. Like it can be really, yeah, um, it's scary. But no, that's that's a really totally. good use case. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I was at South by, sorry, I was going to say I was at South by Southwest uh, okay. last week and there was a company that was working on doing like testing, automated testing using AI for that. And they're like, they make this comment, with all of the people out there that are learning to code through chat GPT, there's a lot more code being written these days. And you never know what the quality of it is until something goes wrong because half the time they don't understand what they're doing. I was sitting there going like, this guy is like, speak to me on like a deeply personal level. Yeah. This feels personal. <laughs> personal <tech. laughs> awesome. Yeah. And was that, that event in general, did you have a good time at South by Southwest? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, just the energy, the whole whole week was was amazing. I went to the demo night for Start Made on Monday night, just amazing. Yeah, loads of interesting ideas, lots of interesting speeches and like just eye-opening stuff. So, yeah, I loved it. Awesome. No, very cool. And so, Cam, I guess before we get started or stuck into all things Cam, we, do you mind taking us through your professional origin story and where you are today? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's been a ride. So I got my start about a decade ago as a consultant and I was working on these massive you know, advice transformation programs in the big banks. One of the coolest projects that I was working on had us messing around with IBM Watson was like right after it had beaten Jeopardy. So the tech was like super oily. You know, it's like basically a technical proof of concept. But the CEO of one of the big banks saw it and thought, hey, you know, let's see if we can use this to engage people who aren't getting financial advice. And this was like way before AI was like the buzzword everywhere. So it was like well ahead of its time. There was like a lot of lessons learned in terms of, you know, what works and what doesn't work with like AI assistance in the wealth space. Then I worked with another bank that was like neck deep in cleaning up all this like bad advice that they'd given out um, and using natural language processing to like break apart statements of advice, pull out the customer goals and spot the red flags. Spent like the next like seven or so years bouncing around different consulting firms and banks and insurers working on like data and digital stuff generally. And then after a while, I thought, you know, I've got to try something different. You know, I want to try and like build my own thing. But like the reality is, you know, like most first time founders get like crushed. Yeah. So I thought, you know, let's let's do this smart. I figured I'd get some startup experience first. And so I joined a neobank called Zinja and I had like all the hype. You know, they had a half a billion dollars in deposits. They were raising money. They had this big like five hundred million dollar raise that was inbound. And then like eight weeks in, it's like boom, like collapsed. You know, it was surreal. And like I went from like cushy corporate job to work in startup life eight weeks later no job um you know my 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 phone started blowing up the recruiters like 20 calls in two days it was just just crazy so then i jumped into another fintech which was called doe that was like startup boot camp for me like one minute you know we're launching this robo advice service in the us and then like the next we're localizing it for australia i even ran like fraud prevention and like aml for a bit so it was like a real eye open up but one of the coolest things was like talking to, I got to talk to a lot of customers. And the thing that really struck me was like so many of them that were around my age just had like no idea what they were doing with their money. You know, they're like throwing money into cash or crypto and, and stocks like it's a lotto ticket and like hoping for the next next big win, right? Um, and it, it, like it, it hit home for me because back when I was working on that Watson project, you know, like a decade ago. I got some financial advice from my client and they said, you know, spend now, save when your income grows. And like, it made perfect sense to me at the time. And I was like, yeah, like I'm all about this. But then years later, I caught up with another buddy from the same project and his parents had put him on a very different track. Like he bought a place at Manly Vale. He lived on two minute noodles. He paid off the place fast. And we catch up like seven years have gone by. He's got a $900,000 apartment and I've got like 80K in savings. And it was like a massive gut punch. Gut punch. Like I was like, oh shit. 
And then I realized like I need to get serious about my finances and looking around, I'm like, this is not just me. Started doing some research, um, you know, found out like there's 11 million people in Australia that want advice, but can't get it. You know, the gap is, is, is enormous. You know, if you think about like the average millennials wealth of like, like $250,000 or so, people with a plan end up with roughly four times more assets in 15, 15 years. It's a million bucks extra per person. Multiply that by like 5 million millennials. And like we're talking trillions of dollars left on the table. So I uh, came up with the idea to, to get Canwe off the ground and, and that's what we're really fired up about. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I really love that origin story. Thank you so much for sharing that, Cam. That's really, um, that was very entertaining. And yeah, it makes sense in terms of the, you've stuck with the startup naming conventions in terms of Camry with um, coming from Zinja and Doe, I think is the one with 17 Gs in it. Um, I'm not sure if it's still around actually, but no, that's that's very cool. And obviously early stage AI as well. Like I think I have a memory of using IBM Watson in like a retail sense. That was like Basically, like early stage ChatGPT, wasn't it? Or similar? It, it was. It was. The, the thing it couldn't do, though, was it couldn't generate content. So it would right. go to its like corpus or like knowledge library and try and pull out the bit of text that was already in like a PDF document and had served that up to you. And so you'd ask a question, you'd get something and be like, it's not exactly what I asked. So it was, like it just technically it just wasn't, wasn't really there yet. Yeah, okay. I mean, that still definitely happens today, I think, in most um, AI plugins that are in most apps. So that's it's really insightful. And obviously, working with big data there in terms of working with um, a big bank from an advice transformation perspective, but also on the um, remediation side as well, did you mention? So actually cleaning yeah. up that as well. And yeah, a real extensive experience in advice as a whole, which is a very rare and but very exciting. And then I guess, yeah, tell us what is can we and, and what problem do you think it's solving after you've um, sort of been through the ringer on both sides? Yeah, so so can we as a platform designed to help ordinary people build and stick to a financial plan? Now, it's one that's really actually engaging and easy to use. The reality is that like no one teaches you how to adult with money. And, and people say this to us all the time. No one taught me how to adult with money. And so for like most people in their 20s and 30s, they're trying to work out how to manage their finances, but still want to live the epic life because of everything they're seeing on Instagram. Um, and it's yeah. overwhelming and like boring. And, and like for some people, it's it's a little scary and people want help. But financial advice is like extremely expensive. And it's seen by a lot of young people as it's it's for people that have already got millions of dollars. So we bridge that gap between trying to do it all yourself and getting professional personal financial advice and our, our central thesis is if we make building a financial plan easy enough if we make it fun if we make it accessible then the majority of people won't just be able to create a plan themselves and stick to it but they'll end up potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions better off over time yeah awesome no it's it's obviously a a really challenging problem and i think you've tackled it in an incredible way you showed me a brief demo of what um, can we does and what it is and so I'd love for you to sort of take us through I guess an overview of functionality what do users see and you know when they jump in what are they doing what sort of steps are they taking yeah so when when users jump into can we they get like this like super cool interactive timeline of their life laid out in front of them and then from there it's literally as easy as dragging and dropping different life events and financial decisions so things like buying a house or having kids or you know planning that epic euro trip you can customize all of them to whatever your goal is all about. Maybe it's like the Euro trip you want to spend thirty grand on, for instance, or maybe it's the house that you want to spend eight hundred thousand dollars on. No houses in Sydney for eight hundred thousand dollars, but <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but you can basically tweak and adjust those events to whatever you're looking for. Then the app is powered by like this really advanced real time financial model that we've built, which calculates all the complex stuff underneath the covers. So it does all like the tax calculations, inflation, loan payments. And we then just simplify that for users and give them just a simple visual projection of like their cash flow, their savings, and their net worth. And then we try and throw in some like practical tips along the way to help them craft their plan. So, you know, it's all about making the process feel you know, natural and empowering and, and kind of like fun, kind of like a game. You know, you're, you're mapping out your future, you're not slogging through financial jargon or like a swamp of numbers. And then on top of that, once you've got a plan, can we then lets you track your progress? You can come back on like your financial date night and check in on how you're going um, and just see like, are you on track? Are we overspending? You know, it's, it's about really like keeping it real and like celebrating the wins. And if you're off track which for a lot of people when they're getting started, making sure that you're not veering too far, of course. 
And then finally, like life changes all the time, particularly for like young people. You know, you know, maybe you want to buy the house a little bit sooner, or uh, you overspent on something, or like there's some holiday that that's come up that's that's drained a bunch of your savings. Um, and that's where like refining and replanning comes in. So um, you can tweak your timeline at any time. It's just about like updating and keeping your financial plan in sync with your life. So you know, you're always in control, and you're there, um, kind of no matter what comes your way. So yeah, no, very cool, and. Yeah, as you mentioned, so it's all about building and sticking to that plan. And honestly, what you what you've built is it's self service financial planning. Like this is the stuff that financial advisors are doing with their clients, using you know a whole range of bits of different pieces of tech, and nowhere near the speed, accuracy, and the leveling level of engagement in terms of the the software that you've built and the the user experience. So I think it's it's genuinely fantastic. Do you think? Like, are there similar offerings out there today or do you feel you're sort of pioneering in the space? And so what category do you think it sort of falls into? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're definitely pioneering in this space. You know, I've, I've been watching this space pretty keenly ever since that original Watson project. And it's become clear to me that the attempts to bridge this gap often end up in either a personal financial management you know, mobile tracking app where you connect your bank account and we help you understand where you spend your money, we let you set some savings targets. And those apps typically struggle because while they do a bunch of cool stuff and at the end of the day, like at the end of the day, like they're looking backwards, they're giving you some insights on the past, not forwards to opportunity. Then you've got like the bite-sized education providers, which are excellent. Like I, I love that stuff, but it still leaves you to run the numbers and work out what's going to work for you and build that plan yourself. And then finally, I think like the, the third thing I've seen is the personal financial advice platforms, which I think fall into the trap of playing within the personal financial advice regulation they end up focused on this experience designed to do like the fact find and then give you an advice recommendation that's that same like 70 page statement of advice that you know consumers are looking i think particularly in the younger segment for something a bit different a bit more dynamic and a bit more empowering and and within their control so so yeah i think we're in a new category like self-service financial planning but not advice and i'd say like yeah yeah so australia i think are quite unique but there are some similar apps globally but they haven't really focused on making the experiences easy, easy to use. So they're more for like finance geeks and, you know, we're, we're, build, we're building something for everyone. So No, I love it. And I think you're totally right when it comes to, oh, in terms of one of the points you made there in particular around the bridging that gap around like personal financial advice, very fact find heavy, like give me your data and then we'll tell you what you exactly need to do. Whereas you've made it so interactive, like it literally, it's a, I think it's the first line on your website, like financial planning is as easy as drag and drop and that's what it is. And that is actually, I believe the power of financial advice or that process of financial planning and financial advice is working out like what is actually possible and why we're going down this path and not the other. I mean, just, just sort of on that, you mentioned to me, we caught up briefly to organize this episode, but I think you mentioned that it was about 62% of people have tried to build their own plan or model their situation. Like, why do you think it's currently so hard? Why do people give up? And is there anything you want to add with regard to how can we sort of makes it easier to A, build a plan and then B, stick to it? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, look, I think most people turn to Excel at the beginning because it's the most accessible tool out there, right? Or they, or they turn to Google Sheets, you know, but when you're trying to plan for the future and for the long term, the thing that's really hard is you have to factor for all of these things that a normal person is going to struggle to even have the financial literacy, let alone the advanced financial modeling skills to do. So things like factoring in inflation, factoring in wage growth, amortizing loan calcs, letting taxation, and then like adjusting everything for inflation as well. So when, when you're looking for the output of what you're building, and trying to work out what your projections showing you, like you want to see that in today's dollars, not in future dollars, where you're looking at a number going like, "Wow, I've got five million dollars." Well, it's only worth two and a half. You know, that's a lot of work, and it's it's pretty overwhelming. So we solve part of that by automating all the complex calculations behind the scenes without you needing to write the formulas or do the code or do the math behind it. But that's that's kind of only step one. I think some of the things that advisors do like an amazing job at that we're trying to replicate is helping you understand the inputs to the model. So if you think about, you know, you've got like this amazing maths engine, that that to me isn't the solution. It's like, well, if I gave you that engine, you got to understand what the inputs are. If you haven't mm. planned for something yet, like, you know, a wedding or for kids, you don't know how much you're going to spend on that or how much to budget for it. So, so we give you some insight into that, into like, you know, if you're planning for a wedding, how much, how much is the average range? If you're planning to have kids, 
what's the typical spend on a kid, for instance. We also give you insight into like what to assume for inflation because the, the lay person on the street is like, I know there's inflation. I don't know what number to, to put in for that. So we'll, we'll give you some insights into the averages as well as the government uh, requirements for that. Then I, then I think one of the other things that advisors do really, really well is they, they make it real for you by like breaking down some of those big figures. So like you, know, you, hear, you hear figures like a kid costs $15,000 a year, for instance. And one of the things advisors do really, really well is they break that down into like a an understandable cost. So it's not fifteen thousand dollars a year; it's a thousand dollars for a crib, um, or a thousand dollars for a pram. It's four hundred dollars for clothes, and this is typically what it'll look like for year one. And they just make that understandable and relatable for people. And we're bringing some of that into the app as well, so that you can look at something and go, "Oh well, yeah, I'm planning to have kids. That seems like a realistic co- cost breakdown." And then I think the final thing that advisors do really, really well is they challenge your thinking on different things. And that's something like you don't get that from an Excel spreadsheet. You, you need to like talk to someone or someone needs to have like an intervention. You know, one advisor I spoke to, they said they spend like half of their time with high earning millennials, just negotiating them from like the Audi Q7 to the Audi Q5 to the Audi Q3, just by like pointing out the impact that, that extra, extra spend is having. And you know, that, that's really the epiphany we want people to have is like, let's challenge you on things at the same time as you're building your plan and go, hey, consider doing it a little bit differently. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. And I think that example you just gave there around the negotiating down on the spend on the car, that really, um, it connects the dots for me in terms of what you, sh- what you showed me in terms of the timeline where it basically is real time, isn't it? Where you're entering in the figure and you can see the impact, like the real time impact of that decision on your future, which should be uh, either exciting or confronting in terms of whatever the inputs are. But do you think, like, do you mind sort of taking us through a bit more on that sort of design process? Like, how did you arrive at that financial modeling user experience? As I mentioned, or maybe I haven't mentioned it, but it is the cleanest, simplest, and also most engaging modeling tool I've ever seen. But yeah, talk to us about that design process. Was it always drag and drop what did it sort of look like before and how did you arrive on this sort of final or finished um, version of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look, I, I love that you called it out. Um, I mean, that, that's basically what we were aiming for from, from day one to make it as easy as possible. You know, and we, we've got a killer designer on our team. Like the, the it, it's been our biggest investment because when we started, we were like, this isn't a math problem, it's a design and UX problem. And the initial concept from this came from some time working on like those big advice programs. So we pitched an idea, something similar to this, uh, but it never took off. And the idea always stuck with me. And then from there, it really evolved. Like we've iterated a ton. We've really been driven the whole time by like customer feedback. And it's all about watching how people interact with the product, you know, what we're building and making it better you know, one step at a time. One of our earliest insights, for instance, was like we built just the calculation engine first. And people were trying to model and they're like, the kid example was like the first one that came up. We're like, you can add kids. They're like, I have no idea how much to put down for a kid. Yeah. Or they would go like, you know, I want to add a home and buy a home. And they'd be like, oh, I know there's some additional stuff I need to budget for, like stamp duty and transfer fees and conveyancing and things like that. But I have no idea what they are. So we tried to give people all these like averages and insights and detail to help fill in those gaps. So like, you know, try and try and get rid of those blind spots. Um, and then we got a bunch of feedback from people. Like it's it's just been like constant feedback from people. Like people wanted to see the impact of a decision before committing to it. So I'd go... I want to explore if I put some of my excess cash into repaying debt faster. You now I've got yep. five thousand dollars a year that I can put into additional debt repayments. And originally, you would just you know, drag and drop that on and say I've got five thousand dollars a year to put it in, and then you'd see the impact on your overall plan. But people were like, I, I want to see that before so that I can see that one decision in isolation. So we started adding some charts to make it more visual as you're adding different events, so you can get a bit of a sense of like before I add this, what's it going to do to this one individual thing that I'm I'm touching. And then like some of our most most recent feedback has been, we're doing a bunch of alpha testing right now. And we've had some really interesting feedback from people where they've run the numbers on something and worked out that the result isn't what they necessarily expected. So they look at it and they go like, oh, this graph is like, I made this change and I somehow end up worse off, even though yeah. I, I feel like logically I should be better off. Um, and so we're, wait, we're, we're like opening up ways for users now to get into the nitty gritty of it and see like the breakdown of calculations and give them transparency. Yeah, because it's just something that people are really trying to understand. And sometimes we've been like, oh, geez, have we got something wrong in the model? And then when you dig into the calculations, it's like, oh, actually, that's right. It's just the, the math works out in an unsurprising or a surprising way. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm 100% sure that that happens on a daily basis in financial planning firms where you've got para planners or associates or advisors doing models and the same thing happens. And then the benefit is normally it's it's nitty gritty by default, which is obviously the, the least engaging for clients. So then you spend all your time trying to make it pretty for clients in PowerPoints or Canva or like trying to yeah, turn this thing into something that it's not. So I think as well, the fact that you're actually seeing how users are using it is it has to be the most powerful way to adapt and make changes, right? You're giving the people what they want. It's, it's exciting. It yeah, I, th- I think the other thing is like we're our whole founding team are kind of like ideal users of this platform ourselves, and like that's huge. You know, we we're yeah. asking ourselves all the time. You know, would I use this? Would I understand this if I didn't have the background I have right now? And the answer is no. Then like we've still got more work to do. Um, so we're just always challenging ourselves on like, is this easy enough for the ordinary person or not? Yeah. No, that's a fantastic guiding principle. I guess sort of um, moving along from that around the sort of talking more about the outputs, I guess, like my understanding is it doesn't actually provide advice. You mentioned it sort of tips and tricks. Do you mind sort of talking about, you know, comparing scenarios um, or even expanding a little more on the personas I think that you've got within Can We, like the purpose, when they show up and how that sort of fits into the whole experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I think like this is so important. So at no stage does can we provide any advice or recommendations to people? You know, back back to what I said earlier. Like the the challenge with doing that is you immediately end up in that personal financial advice world, yep. and then you end up trying to build automation of statements of advice. So for our users, the output is a clear interactive plan for their future that they can understand and they can get behind. We do let them now drill into the breakdown of any individual year and see based on all the different decisions that they've made where they're directing their money. So like you can dive into it and make not decisions, but like understand what the decisions you've you've modeled um, will look like and, and how to achieve that. Yeah. And then in terms of like comparing scenarios, like that's that's absolutely on the table at the moment today. Like you have to sign up for a new account, build multiple plans, or like you can reconfigure your plan in different ways to compare things. But we are working on it right now. And in the coming weeks, we'll be launching our first version of like a multi-scenario feature, which will allow you to create as many scenarios as you want. The, the thing we've learned from that as well is like the key when you're comparing those scenarios is to have the metrics that really matter to the person when comparing. So, yeah. you know, it's not just this scenario gets you to X higher dollars. It's like I have these goals that I'm shooting for and which of those best, which of these scenarios best helps me get there. So I think we're cooking something pretty special in that space. Stay, stay tuned on that one. Nice. Um, and then in terms of the characters, so um, look, we infuse these basically little like character sprites throughout the entire app. You you meet them at the very start. We have four characters. They're kind of our, our little crew, if you will. We have Spendy, Deddy, Savy, and Investy. And they've all got their own like individual like cute little prop as well. Like Deddy is like way down by a ball and chain. And they appear all throughout the app. So when you're adding different life events and different decisions to your timeline, they're giving you helpful insights based on their persona. So for instance, if you're saying, or, or you've dragged on an event to pay for a car, then Savy will give you a little thing like Savy says. Financial advisors often suggest purchasing the cheapest, most reliable vehicle you can accept. After all, cars are expensive. They've got ongoing costs. Um, and they depreciate over time. So maybe think about where else you can put that money for a bigger payoff. And then if you change the payment type for that car from cash to uh, a car loan, then Daddy shows up and is like, just remember, you're now dealing with you know three different compounding factors against you. You've got depreciation, you've got loan interest, and you've got inflation that's eroding the value of when you sell. So it's those like little nudges that that kind of make you stop and just just you know let you rethink what you're doing, but without feeling like you're getting lectured and like we tried to make the characters as like friendly and warm and and almost like childlike and innocent um so that they don't have that like lecturing lecturing tone you know we've we've iterated on on those characters like a bunch of times like we keep tweaking the messages but the feedback we keep getting from people is that they love it like it makes it less robotic makes it way more human um you know it's lighthearted and that people don't feel feel judged so yeah really 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 proud of those yeah nice i, I can imagine it would give a sense of comfort as well to consumers when they're going through the model they're you know people can scream through it or go really quickly or even sometimes accidentally click on a, a pick list value or something like that and then maybe that is also a way to just sense check what you're doing is actually within those guardrails of what you wanted to do personally and financially 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think like there's so much opportunity to infuse character design into what we're doing and just to like subtly give people those little nudges. So yeah, big fan. Very cool. No, it is very exciting. And I guess, yeah, do you mind sort of talking a little bit more about what's next for Camry? Like, is there any additional roadmap developments you want to share or anything that's got you excited for the future in general? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like we, we have a packed, <laughs> packed roadmap. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're charging ahead at the moment. So our plan is to bring on 500 new users this quarter um, and we'll be launching our beta just in time for the new year. So like, you know, perfect timing to like start 2025 with a bang. Yeah. Link to that. We're also working on a sharing feature. So you'll be able to share like your game, your, your game plan with like a partner or a mate um, or even potentially someone online to get a second set of eyes on your ideas. So like we've heard over and over and over again from people that in their friend group there's the money guru and eventually people either go you know they go with their spreadsheet to get some help or if they don't have a spreadsheet yet they go to them to get the spreadsheet Um, so we think this will be like a total game changer for collaboration and then the final thing we're working on that's really exciting at the moment we're calling it the camwe magic assistant Um, and the idea is basically this little assistant it'll stick it stick at the bottom it'll be like a little financial sidekick if you get stuck It'll have you back and give you like tips and guidance to get you moving again. So still no judgment, just, um, yeah, just support. Cool. No, that's incredibly exciting. I think, yeah, sharing the game plan with, I guess, the fifth um, character being the money guru, that's great. And also, I don't know, you mentioned adulting with money, probably sharing it with parents as well. Look at me, mum and dad, I'm finally adulting. Look at what I'm doing with my life. Um, that's awesome. And, yeah, I, I'm really excited for um, to see – how the platform and, and the software develops. I mean, a big question as well, you mentioned sharing there and sharing it with other people. Are you open to partnerships with advice firms or licensees or institutions? I think there would be enormous interest in something like this being used in that sort of hybrid approach at, at a bare minimum. Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're absolutely open to partnerships. Our focus is still like lasered in on consumers and making sure that we're solving their needs, but we think there is like massive opportunity to collaborate. You know, we'd love to collaborate with people on like referral partners. So, you know, look, not not everyone's ready to dive into financial advice straight away. And I think can we can be a great first step. It can be that first little nudge where they come in, they take that first step, they start building a plan, and it gives them the confidence to go and make that leap to personal financial advice. Then on the flip side, we've spoken to some advice firms that, you know, they have to turn away younger clients because they're not yet ready, like maybe like financially, to get the full value yeah. from traditional financial planning. And we're also looking for partners who want to refer those people to us so that they can still get something valuable and then, you know, stay in the pipeline so that when they're ready for that more formal advice or when they're ready for that personal financial advice, you know, it's still kind of of warm. And then the other thing that we're also really interested in is we're, we're really interested in exploring opportunities to partner on general advice programs. So, um... You know, think of it as like you bring the content, you bring a structured education program, and we'll bring the digital platform that makes it all come alive. So people get good general advice, and then they can use Camway to model it and turn it into something that they can actually use. Love it. No, very exciting. And um, I love yeah where it's all heading. Cam, thank you so much for your time today. What's the best way to learn more about Camway or if someone wants to progress the conversation with you? Yeah, so um, you can hit me up directly at Cameron at can we which is c-a-n-w-i dot com dot au always happy to connect and chat more and if you want to check out what we're building you can head over to canwe dot com dot au and join the waitlist we're onboarding new users every week and our waitlist is where we start so if you want in early that's the way to do it perfect Cam thank you again now, thanks so much for having me on Patrick it's been, been a pleasure chatting and you know, we're just getting started but we're very very fired up 